Icon Church Leadership Podcast. My name is Alona. I'm the Operations Director at Icon, and I'm here with Justin Anderson, our lead pastor. We are in a season that is all about discipleship, and so the last two episodes have been about our philosophy of discipleship. We talked about the fact that it's proactive, the fact that it's about following Jesus' life, and today we're talking about the fact that the spiritual life is rooted in the disciplines. Uh, and so Justin, talk to us about the idea of spiritual disciplines and what we mean by that. Yeah, so love spiritual disciplines, been a huge part of my life and development and, and throughout church history has been a real core for spiritual development. One of the things that we uh, do with spiritual disciplines is that we call them relational practices and not in a replacement kind of way, but more in an explanatory way. And here's what I mean by this. Sometimes the idea of spiritual disciplines can seem kind of woo-woo, right? Kind of, uh, kind of like, whoa, you know, deep meditation and all these kinds of things. And certainly there can be aspects to it that are deeply spiritual and deeply experiential. But at their core, they are simply relational practices. Right. And what I mean by that is that our relationship with God is not fundamentally different than our relationship with each other, with our spouse, with our friends, with our kids. It's the same. Right. In the sense that relationships are relationships, right? So uh, when Jesus is asked what the greatest commandment is, he responds by saying, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, which means that the core of Christianity is relational. Right, that we would have a love relationship with God right. is the highest ideal, mm -hmm. right? So when we think about the practices in our lives, in our relationships mm -hmm. um, that are meaningful and build our relationships, so the pr kind of practices I have with my wife, Emily, and we all have with our friends, yep. uh, they are not different really from spiritual disciplines. Here's an example. So one of the spiritual disciplines is reading the Bible. Right? And so we read the Bible to get to know who God is, his character, his practices, and kind of all that he is. Um, that's not totally different than um, the experience of going on a date with someone, right? So you go sure. on a first date, for instance, and you uh, ask questions to get to know who they are, right? Mm -hmm. All the big ones, right? Where are you from? What's your family like? What's your favorite color? All of the things that tell us the most about this other person. We're yeah. trying to get to know them, okay? That's what it is functionally when we read the Bible. We're getting to know this God that we've been designed to love, okay? We can't love someone that we don't know, but knowledge of a person is not the end of the process, it's the beginning of the process, okay? So Bible reading functions a lot like the normal relationship of just getting to know a person that we're going to be in or continue to be in relationship with. Yeah, and there are a lot of spiritual practices that we value in that way. So another one, this idea of prayer, that uh, prayer in just a relational sense is this idea of conversation or engaging with someone, and that's talking, that's also listening, uh, it's celebrating with someone, it's also learning to just sit with someone in sad moments. Like We do that in our relationships in the same way that we would do that with God, and so that's why it's important for us to kind of practice the different types of prayer to be able to have those moments, yes, where we speak to God and where we don't speak, and we allow God to kind of speak to us in that. Uh, any healthy relationship is going to have that, and so our relationship with God is no different. Um, and the ways that we practice that uh, really help shape, again, that relationship that we have with God. Yeah. Uh, solitude is one of those practices that can seem somewhat woo-woo, right? You get out into the forest by yourself and you sit in the leaves and just contemplate your existence. But it's basically date night, right? So I've got five kids, which means I can't hear myself think most of the time. And, and so when I get date night with my wife, it's a chance for us to get away, to just have some person-to-person -person sure. time without distractions, without work, without all of the things that are going on in our life to just be focused on who my wife is and to connect. That's the function of solitude. Now, none of this is meant to demystify or or it is meant to demystify it's not meant to despiritualize yeah okay say it that way so 
These are deeply spiritual practices. Mm -hmm. This is a connection to the God of the universe, right? This is uh, uh, being in the presence of the Holy Spirit. So I, I don't mean to, uh, to take away the really deep and spiritual nature of these things, but I do intend to demystify the practice itself, mm -hmm. that it doesn't require this massive spiritual maturity to go out into the forest and sit and be with God. Which you can still do. Yes. <laughs> I highly recommend it. So uh, community uh, is another one of these things sure. that is, uh, again, not substantively different than relationships. So we want to be a part of God's church. We want to be a part of God's family. That's a practice that is, uh, you know, we talk about fellowship and community. We have these words that we use in church, yeah. but it's, again, not super different than just having a group of friends and letting that group of friends shape who we are. Like yeah. I grew up with, uh, with four buddies who we grew up since we were 12 together. And to this day, they still shape me. I was just texting with them the other day. They're guys who made me who I am for better and for worse. I blame them, we know who to blame. <laughs> uh, but also like they shape me in really important ways. And that's kind of what community is, yeah. right? So what, what's another example of this? Yeah, I think the last one that I might talk about is an idea of Sabbath, this idea of getting away, that we do that in life when we vacation, when we head with our friends, girls trip to Palm Springs, like we find a way to decompress, to relax. Um, and I think it's just that reminder of God inviting us into that rest as well. Like we're not only a machine that all we do is work, but we do have the moments where we stop, we reflect, we celebrate, we enjoy life and all that it is. Uh, and really get to have those moments where we get to get away. And I think God invites us into that in a relationship with him in the same way that we would do that with friends and family, to be able to take the moments to pause um, and really delight in life and then be able to come back in and feel excited for what's coming next. Yeah, and I wanna connect this to our last podcast too, where we talked about pursuing the lifestyle of Jesus mm -hmm. in order to experience the outcomes, the life of Jesus, the abundant life that the gospel promises. And uh, I, one of the statistics that always kind of drives me crazy when I hear it is about divorce rates among Christians and non-Christians, right? And how they're not different. And, and that's true if what you're looking at is um, people who just identify as Christians or people who don't identify as Christians yeah. and the divorce rates are largely the same. But when you get beneath those statistics a little bit and you look at um, people who actually practice the Christian faith, they are consistently attending church, they're reading their Bible, they're mm -hmm. praying, actually living out the lifestyle of Jesus, not just claiming the title, right. then those divorce rates diverge significantly mm -hmm. and they're really, really different. And, and Christians who are practicing the lifestyle of Jesus actually experience way lower divorce rates, which is just one example of the kind of abundant life that God promises us in the gospel. But that's just an outcome. A healthy relationship is an outcome of consistent pursuit of the lifestyle of Jesus. So that's, it, it's, not, uh, it's not hard to understand, sure. right? Like it, as much as these things can seem challenging or daunting, you open your Bible and you accidentally open to Zechariah and you're like, I have no idea how to read oh, this. No. <laughs> None of us do. That's the dirty secret. None of us know how to read Zechariah. But here's the thing. The, the practice of reading the Bible, praying, mm -hmm. even if it, it's simple and stuttering and half-hearted at times or whatever, the practice shapes us yeah. and it makes us into the kinds of people who can experience real life in God. Absolutely. And we take that seriously as a church. So what are some of the ways that we as a, as a community actually practice these things together. Yeah, we integrate a bunch of spiritual practices into our actual rhythms and liturgy on Sundays. Um, the community one is kind of a unique thing that we do. Um, I mean, we pray together and we sing and we open the Bible and all kind of the normal liturgical practices. We do a weekly interview, mm -hmm. um, which has been a really cool practice. We started at the very first week of uh, ICON because we were just getting to know each other. It was actually at our soft launch yeah. before we had actually even started. So we had somebody come on stage. We asked them the same three questions every time. We say, tell us a little bit about yourself. We ask them what's a spiritual practice that's shaped mm -hmm. them and been important for them. And then we ask how we can pray for them. Mm -hmm. We do it every week. And that, that's a way to build community, to learn yeah. from each other. Um, we do a time of silence and solitude. We mentioned that in the previous podcast. 
but that's a, a key piece of what we do. Um, and I think it cultivates the sense of, okay, we just heard from the word mm -hmm. and now we're gonna take two minutes to let that get deep on us and not just go, oh, it was a good sermon, let's move on to the next song. Sure. But to go, no, let's stop. Yeah. I just heard something about who God is that was significant and maybe convicted me of sin. Let me get that, let, let that get to my heart. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a big piece. Yeah, and we practice that in community groups as well, kind of as, a, as another space for our church. Uh, which is a, a space where we'll practice reading our Bibles together, praying together, engaging in conversation. And it just becomes a place where we can kind of normalize those practices, especially for people who are non-believers. Like we really believe in that low barrier to entry that anybody could join in a community group and that opportunity to just see what it looks like. And it's not weird. It's not super woo-woo. Like this is just something we do as a regular practice of our faith. And I think our community groups offer that for our church. Yeah, Christianity is weird enough uh, uh, <laughs> to begin with, and people are weird enough. Uh, yes. That combination, we don't need to add more weirdness uh, <laughs> by making what ought to be really normal practices into this kind of, again, woo-woo kind of deal. So the last piece, the last ministry environment we have is icon groups. And one of the things we've built into the core of it is that every module practices a, uh, a spiritual discipline or a relational mm -hmm. practice related to, as much as possible, um, the content. So yeah. when we're talking about um, the, the, the cross and the implications of the atonement, we're practicing repentance together, yeah. right? And so we're trying to tie that theological truth to a relational practice that uh, goes along with it. And that's, that's a key piece. Absolutely. Uh, and so to close, what would we say are some takeaways for people at ICON and people who are just listening in? Yeah, uh, I mean, if you're at ICON, pick a practice and, and just get better, right? One of the things yeah. we say all the time is you have to begin where you are, but always take the next step. So we're always trying to get better mm -hmm. with an acknowledgement of I am who I am, I am where I am, but what's the next step for me? So I would just identify what's an area that uh, is strong, but you want it to be stronger or weak and you want it to be stronger or you've never practiced Sabbath or you've never been in a time of solitude and you're frankly afraid of being uh, alone with your thoughts. Great. Embrace the crazy of your own thoughts and uh, get some time of solitude sure. uh, and, and just start to practice it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then if you're not a part of ICON and you're a, a leader, um, again, I'm going to just kind of harp on this over and over. Are you giving your people the tools to actually practice spiritual yeah. disciplines in their life? God has given us spiritual disciplines to be the tools that cultivate relationships so that we can do the thing Jesus said is the most important thing, to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Mm -hmm. He said that's the ideal. The way in which we do that is these spiritual practices that cultivate relationship with God so we can know him. And when we know him, we will love him because there is no one more lovable than God himself. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks for tuning in this week as we've talked about, again, our philosophy of discipleship. We'll keep finishing this season on discipleship as we keep going. So wherever you're seeing the content, engage with us. Let us know what you think. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. To see our show notes and other episodes, head to iconchurch.org slash leadershippodcast.